Mark Kahn, uh, thanks for joining us here at uh, uh, this Rail Conference today, uh, Tomorrow's Rail. Um, you talked in your presentation today about the need to be more aggressive about the way we tackle the huge challenges on the railway. Was the scaling back of electrification therefore a disappointment to you? Well, it's not, first, it's not a scaling back. I mean, it's, uh, as the Secretary of State said, we still have £38 billion to spend over this control period. But what we know is that some of those projects have cost more than we originally thought. Mm -hmm. And so we need to rephase some of those programmes. And so that's what uh, the review will do over the next uh, few months, is to say, well, how, what is the right way in which mm -hmm. to deliver these programmes over time? And I think it's... You know, to me, it's just really important that at this moment we sort of level with people about mm -hmm. just how difficult this is. Yeah. It's an enormously challenging program, and I think it, we should level with people, set out a program, and then deliver mm -hmm. it. And one of the things you also said was that, I suppose, the realisation that 95% of the projects in uh, this, this CP uh, weren't really thought through enough. Well, they were at yeah. a very early stage. Yeah. It's not that they yeah. weren't th thought through, but they were sort of in our gate terminology, it's sort of grip too, which, yeah. which is at the very, at a concept yeah. stage. So that's a learning for, for when you go forward to try to, to do more, you talked about upfront engineering, getting that work done. So I believe that you should do a lot more of the engineering work up front before you, you commit to a, a cost, yeah. if you like, and, and a schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, because inevitably, experience shows that when you do that detailed work you find it's more difficult right, than yeah, you originally yeah. thought mm -hmm. and great western is a great example of that yeah. you know we have 167 i think it is bridges that we have to either raise or lower yeah. many of them are listed yeah. uh, we've got you know brunel's last remaining cast iron yeah. bridge mm -hmm. and, and it's this sort of detail that you then have to get into that then changes the schedule and the cost. Right? People look at what's going on at Network, people say, you know, what is, what's happening there? You talk about skills today. Have you lost quite a lot of your, I suppose, senior folk that have gone off to do HS2? Is, is that a problem to you, that the fact that people have been moving on? You talked about going, going abroad. I, I'm uh, not worried about the, uh, the most senior levels. I mean, we have lost some, some people, but we've also brought in some fantastic people. Yeah. But uh, across the company as a whole, yes, we are losing people. We, uh, mm. As I said in my speech today, 900 ex-network yeah. rail engineers are now working overseas mm -hmm. for different companies. Yeah. So um, I'm, I want to try to make Network Rail a place that people want to stay right. for their whole career. That's why I'm very excited about Network Rail Consulting, our international mm -hmm. consultancy. Why I'm very pleased that we won the California High Speed Rail uh, contract that I announced today. Yeah because I think it gives people the opportunity to develop an international career, mm -hmm. to really develop their technology and stay in network yeah. rail. But of course you have got Peter Hendy coming to you uh, yep. from Transport for London. I mean, what, is, what, is, what does Peter bring? Obviously he brings... I'm hugely excited about uh, having Peter uh, with us in network rail because of course I think he has had that experience. He understands customers. He absolutely has had that experience of running a very intense um, tube system and transport system with yeah. the buses as well. And, uh, and I think his relentless focus on customers and his relentless focus on um, performance every day um, mm -hmm. really is exactly what we're trying to do at the moment. We're trying to really change the way our railway operates every yeah. day, making it a little better every single day. Yeah. And it is that relentless ambition to be a bit better every day that I think great companies have and I think Peter will help us in that okay. journey. Digital railway, that is clearly the key just to finish off with. You know, that, that, is, that is the future for, for the railways. Without that, you really will not be able to deliver what we need to I'm, deliver. I'm absolutely uh, convinced that mm -hmm. the digital railway is a national strategic priority. Mm -hmm. If we want to really increase the capacity and reliability and speed of our national network, we need to embrace the digital railway. Mm -hmm. And as an industry, we need to be bolder and braver about doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I think it's the only way in which we're going to meet the enormous customer demand mm -hmm. um, in the future. Big challenges ahead. Mark, thanks for joining us here today. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks.